And welcome to the Sports Edge, powered by SportsHandicapper.com. Knee deep in the middle of some crazy World Cup actions recorded on a Friday. We got bowl season coming up. NFL, we're getting to the nitty gritty here. Let's bring in the noble peeps. We'll start with, uh, actually, we'll get to Jamie in a minute. But Steely McNeely, I know the World Cup is your favorite sporting event. You've been watching every minute, right? I haven't seen one second. I do want to give you props. Uh, we all know how hard it is. You are the champ of the Westgate. And until someone wins it, you're still the champ. We all know how hard it is to win that ever. But you also had a chance this year to win this last quarter. And we, weren't you done like a half game? Yeah, half game going into last week. But I only finished three and two. It wasn't good enough. I had still, to go five and out, basically. You had a chance, and that's why you're as good as you are. Uh, Jamie. World Cup uh, numero uno. How do you feel as we, I mean, we're recording right now in the middle of this ridiculous Argentina Netherlands, uh, you know, extra time fest with a goal in the 111th minute or 101st minute. Uh, it's just been, a, it's, it was Spain out, Brazil out. Could Argentina be out before we end recording this show? Um. Well, that the, their goalkeepers from Aston Villa. So, <laughs> Never ever trust them. Never, never. Really? I mean, I mean it, it, it's just a bad omen, isn't it, dude? I've never seen my club do anything really. Uh, I've never seen a, a, a Villa player do anything for the country. Well, I said, I mean, David Platt in Italia '90 kind of thing, but we didn't win anything. So, um, but yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It's great. I mean, look, watching, you know, it's it, it, it's. It's kind of great seeing like the world. Everybody gravitates to Neymar and Messi and Ronaldo, but there's there's, there's so many players on the teams which are just you you you, you, you know it's it's it, it's been a really good tournament. I, I, yes. I, I think you know. I mean, none of the teams of 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 you, you know you think Croatia are, are, are out of it, but it, it goes to show. I mean, it's only one goal, one goal, and even two goals in this Holland game. It, you, you know, you can. You can always come back. Great for live betting. Um, you know, just just bet the underdog at all times and you'll be able to get both of them at plus odds. Yeah, just take Morocco over and over again. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. It's it, you, 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 you know, it, it's it's cool to watch. You know, it's cool to watch. Yes, yeah, all right. See, we'll get back with you in a minute. I want to talk about the, you know, leading into bowl season, of course, the NFL. Uh, Jamie, of course, scratchcanning.com is your great website. And, you know, golf is kind of on – hiatus until the Sony Tournament of Champions early in January. But before we – I want to talk about the World Cup for a minute after this before we move into to football stuff. But when it comes to are – we, are, are we both looking at our TV screens? You're, you're looking Obviously. At the way, I'm looking the other I just way. made a live bet on Holland. <laughs> got all the better. By the way, you, you look at this game, you know, if people are watching the show, and you know, obviously they're not going to watch it live. We were recording this as they started the 30 minutes, 15 minutes each of extra time. It was a 2 nothing game to the 89th minute after after Messi got a penalty and actually made this one. He missed yeah. the last penalty. Time. And then and then Argentina uh, – sorry, Holland just changed the way they played. Yep. They put two big guys on up front, hit the ball up to them, and uh, and, and, and and look what it does. Um, they, literally, they literally threw everything in their power at the net, and they scored two goals in about 11 minutes. I mean, that, that, that minutes second goal time. was really cool, wasn't it? You know, direct free kick. Everybody thinks they're going to shoot straight away, and, and then you just – just pass it on the inside. I mean, nobody's looking at that. Yeah, it was unreal. Uh, before I, I want to get back into the World Cup in a second and get your you know feelings as we have England coming up in the quarters and if there's any value plays with the teams that are left, with obviously Spain out, Germany out, France, of course, is still in, and maybe Argentina going out. There's a favor right now at about plus 175. But when it comes to you getting ready for, for January and golf and this new season, I mean, it's obviously the same season as last year in the wraparound. Have you been looking at anything? Have you been? Yeah, I mean, you do it, such it, great it, work at ScratchCaddy.com. Yeah, I I actually uploaded a sheet last night from uh, from. So I took all the results for 2022. We broke down all of the events: uh, Bentgrass, Bermuda grass. Uh, we did classical courses and then resort coastal courses. If you go to the top there, if you scroll up to the top there, down it'll say 2022 stats, and then just click on the sheet that says by player. Go to click here, and then go to club uh, by player. By player at the top, at the bottom down. 
Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was looking You're at the top. So these are all the average finishing positions for the top 20 players in the world. Uh, whether it be on Bermuda grass courses, bent, you got classical, you got coastal resort, you got the length of the course, um, long and short. Long was over 7,500 yards. Uh, short was under 7,100 yards, I believe. And then you got the scoring, whether the scoring was minus 20 or lower, or whether it was minus 10 or higher. And 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 all this kind of does, Dan, is it just lets us know where players have had success. Um, I mean, look at uh, you know, look at Xander Shoffley there on the uh, on, on, on right. the short on the long courses and the short courses. And then look at that in comparison to 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 Will Zalatoris. Um, certain players totally have opposite have certain things that they prefer. Um, and you know what? If the same golfer, I mean, Shoffley, for example, eh, he's always going to be about fourteen to twenty to one, isn't he? You know, right. roughly around that twenty to one if he's not playing well. Um, you know, but. You know what you 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 put him on say a a, a Tory Pines or one of the or, or a TPC Sawgrass, which are six seven hundred yards in difference, and if he's priced up the same, well, he's more value in one than the other. Yeah, I th I think you want to look at you know when you look at different things like this, which is what you do when you put this sheet together for obviously tournaments, but obviously this for the end of the year stuff. I think that people don't understand. I mean, obviously we try to do this on this show and I know we've taught a lot of people and they faked us, you know, via my social media and other ways as well. People don't seem to understand that it, there's really a science that goes into to golf. There's no better when it comes to, I think, value in, as far as betting goes. I mean, we're not talking about a lot of horse racing on this show, but horse racing and golf to me have the best value because you've got the ability in a certain week, let's say you're, you know, your average, uh, you know, your uh, your unit's 50 bucks, and you take four golfers. You might give out, JB, sometimes you give out three, sometimes you give out four or five, et cetera. If you take four golfers, one guy's 100 to one, one guy's 70 to one, one guy's 35 to one, one guy's 50 to one. If you hit one of those in a two, three, four-week period, which you have done over and over again, not only are you positive for probably the whole season, but you've got a chance to make some real money. And with what you do by diving into the different types of greens, obviously you mentioned in this piece, the long and the short courses, and how Zalatoris and Shoffley are backwards on those. You know, Zalatoris is obviously really good when it comes to uh, the long courses and Shoffley very good on the short courses and vice versa. Th there really is a, a method to the madness that gives you a great chance of profiting from golf. And you've been doing this for years and you take the guesswork out of it. I, I just, I, I applaud you for it. Did I lose you? Hello. Sorry about oh, there that. There you are. You're back. All right. Go back. Go Sorry. ahead. Sorry, Dan. What were you saying? No, just uh, all the, how you just take all the guesswork out of things and how you really, there really is this great advantage when you just are able to do the, the research and, and put, tabulate things together to give yourself a better chance to pick winners when it comes to the most valuable betting sport aside from horse racing. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's some, sometimes, uh, okay. I mean, you, you're trying to pick the winner of the event, right? Um, it doesn't half make it a lot easier if you can scratch out three or four from the top of the bed in who you don't like, you know. Um, for example, put Shane Lowry on a, on a low scoring event. His average finishing position last year was 52nd. Yeah, and, and he's going to be 25, 30 to 1 in the bed in. Um, right. You know, there's, there's just little stuff like this. Now, again, these, these numbers... It, it, it's not a large sample size. You know, you, you've maybe got seven or eight events and all of the sheets uh, are there at the bottom. So you can see the events that were calculated to get all of these numbers. And this is literally their average finishing position in those events. So what I did, obviously, when a player misses the cut, uh, I need to put a numerical, note, a statistical value on that. So I put everybody at 70. So you miss the cut, you get a finishing position of 70th. You know, so that's that's not helping anybody in these numbers. So, and then we just add them all up, divide them by the amount of uh, of events, and uh, and out come these numbers. And there's some real good, good. It, it, it's just very useful as a as a guide. You know, of who do I want to look at? Um, you know, I mean, 
Look at Jordan Spieth there on, on the Bermuda grass greens and the bent grass greens. Uh, look at Tom Kim there on Bermuda and bent. Um, you know, it, it's completely the opposite for two players. Right. Um, but but those are things that it's always good to know. It's always good to, to, to you, you know, you can, I, I wouldn't say you can put a line through them straight away, um, but you can concentrate a little bit more on certain players and a little bit less on others. Well, we're really looking forward to the start of that season. We just got a few more weeks till we get to the Sony and uh, obviously that California swing. And then, of course, we get close to the players and the Masters. Sure. I mean, I, I, I think I've been saying it for a couple of months now. And and I was actually just doing these uh, these sheets last night. And then I, I saw the courses that, uh, that Max Homer had won on this year. And it was the two short courses. And I've always said I, I love Max Homer for the Players' Championship. And the players is a short course as well. It is. Sawgrass. Whenever I can, I, the, the first time I see a line for Max Homer for the players, um, we're going to bet it. And, uh, you, you, you know, he's, he's just going to be one of those that, you know, that, that one of those anti-post bets that you can, you know, hopefully pick up. He's got, he's got, he's always played well in California as well. You've got a California swing before then. If you get on the players beforehand, he's, he, he, his price is going to drop by a third at least. All right, before we get to Seely McNeely, I wanted to to talk to you for a second about the World Cup. We're watching this Holland-Argentina game. It looked like it was going to be dead for the Dutch, and they find a, a way to score two goals in the last 10 minutes. There was 10 minutes of uh, injury time added. Uh, first, I want to start with your big quarterfinal coming up tomorrow. Uh, Viva la France versus bloody old England. I mean, England's the underdog, but it's not. they're not a huge underdog. France, obviously, if you look at it, maybe it's been the best overall in this tournament with Brazil being out and Spain being out and Germany never even qualifying for the knockout stages. What do you think about England and France? Is there any value on the English plus almost two to one or, or plus like 160 or so to, qual- to advance? Where are you I, at I, with I, this game? It should be a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it's going to be a great game, isn't it? I mean, obviously you got uh, Kylian Mbappe there, probably the, the best player in the world right now. And, and, and I mean... <laughs> I, mean, I know you don't want to have to root a for good the game. I mean, hey, listen, I've I've been watching England in World Cup since uh, since 1986. You know, I still remember fucking Maradona's hand of God, and and, and I remember his second goal, which was a classic. Uh, you know, I remember you know Lineker's back post header to bring him back to two one, and then Mark Hately Nini scoring the equalizer as well. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I've seen it all. It's going to be a great game. You know, we always kind of ex- expect England to kind of, we always kind of expect to get to the quarterfinals um, and anything extra is a bonus, you know, because that's when you play the teams, you know. Um, now, you know, France are, 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 are a great team. They've got, like I said, they've probably got the best player in the world right now, Mbappe. And uh, I, I think, though, if you can contain him and you can shut him down, I don't see why England... Um, couldn't win the game. Now, will they? I, 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 I don't know. Um, it's just going to be one of those days to kind of enjoy the game. I'm, I'm going to go and pick up my son and, uh, and, and, and watch the game with him. And I've already told him in four years' time, as long as England or Costa Rica qualify, we'll be up in the States watching it as well. I love it. And you, uh, you can stay with me here. We got stuff all around the Midwest. All right, so quickly on this, and we obviously we're recording as they're in extra time now. With Holland and uh, Argentina, Argentina came into today plus one seventy five, the favorite to win the World Cup. But do you? I just want to ask you about value. You've got, as of now, you've got seven teams left. You've got France, Argentina, Portugal, England, the Netherlands, Croatia, and Morocco. And you mentioned about the live betting, which is great. You bet it live right now. As far as to win it, do you see any value on? I mean, obviously the Dutch have to win this game. They're seven to one. Portugal is four and a half to one. <laughs> Your English are four and a half to one. Croatia, all they do is keep winning and getting the finals. They knocked out uh, the favorite Brazilians earlier today. Croatia, eight to one. Morocco, 25 to one. And then, of course, Argentina live right now is four to one. Any value? Because I know you picked Argentina, so did I. Yeah. For the World Cup. But if they lose today, is there value on a Portugal with Ronaldo coming off the bench? I think so, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I you, you, you know what the thing, the, the, the kind of the iconic thing is, is that, you know, everybody thinks about Portugal and Cristiano Ronaldo, but their players that they've got around him, you know, their defense is is ridiculous. Right. That's why they um, can have him come off the bench. That, that Portugal midfield with Jao Felix, Bernardo Silva, 
Um, my God, dude, they, they've got players. They all get overlooked and, and, and not spoken about because it's always Ronaldo, Ronaldo, Ronaldo. But Portugal are, 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 are a great team. Now, I, I think Morocco, you kind of find in these things, you know, that one of these surprise nations, they can only get so far, you know. So I, I would expect Portugal to go ahead and beat Morocco tomorrow. Uh, I think they'll just have too much. And, and you know, Morocco have, have, have done fantastically well. Um, but you kind of see them after one big game. It's tough to do it twice. It's, it's real tough. Right. To do and it even twice. though they're virtual home games for Morocco, it's, 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 they played incredible against Spain. But it's one of these things where, like you said, you can, at this level, in the quarters and the semis of the World Cup, you can only do it so much. I'm great. Yeah, there's only, yeah I, I, I mean, now, I, I mean, I, I kind of saw that. And, and, and I saw I saw the U.S. go out last week. And and uh, the, the difference is, is it's you've got one or two players on that team that could just make a difference, don't you? Uh, you know, they've all got them. You, you know, France, Argentina, Brazil. Now, I mean, Holland, they just they just throw on, throw on some six foot six center forwards and throw the ball up in the air. Um, but hey, listen, if it works, that, 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 that's, that's not an issue either, is it? Um, so it's, it, it's, it's real interesting, man. It, it's real good. I, I didn't think I kind of enjoy it, but, uh, I you told know, you, you would before the tournament started. As soon as, as soon as the games come around, I'm like, yeah, well, maybe I'll change my tune. And now England are playing in the quarterfinal. And hey, listen, if England are in the final against Argentina, oh my good Lord, I don't know what we're going to do then. All right, well, good luck to the bloody old English. Great job by you, as always. Please check out scratchcanny.com. Golf's right around the corner. Jamie, we'll get back with you in just a minute. Let's bring in the Westgate champ, the king of the world, Seely McNeely. I know, like you, we said earlier, the World Cup, your favorite event. It basically goes World Cup and everything else. So have you enjoyed it? Uh, I couldn't tell you who's in it. I couldn't tell yes, you. Yes, you can. Is the United States still in it? The United States is not in the, the same oh, Dutch. Geez. What a How shame. Can beat us? What a shame. Yeah, I had to watch that game from the lobby of the, the Michigan, the team hotel in Indy for the Big Ten championship game. And uh, let me tell you, that was a, that was a rough one. We, 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 had, we The U.S. scored a goal in the second half to cut it to two to one, but it was just too much Dutch firepower. Uh, Seal, let's talk about a few things here. We'll start with bowl season. I know it's obviously a lot different than, you know, what you're able to do when you handicap throughout the year. But as we get ready for these 41 bowl games, what are your thought processes going to be? Are you going to have some selections on them? Obviously, a lot of kids aren't playing these days. It's almost like during the regular season we've talked about on this show where you get you know frustrated when, when people are, you know, injuries are kind of piling up and things aren't necessarily, obviously, information is important. And sometimes injuries have really helped you. But we're not in the COVID era as much anymore where there's all these cancellations. That being said, a lot of these kids might not announce they're going to be out of the bowl game until a week or two before. Some won't, will announce right away. Some won't announce until a day or two before. Uh, and there can be late injury stuff. What is your feeling on the bowl season and value? Oh, I, I love the bowl season. I, I already fired away for, on a few games. But it, you, you can't skip the Army Navy game. I mean, don't forget, college football season's not over yet. Oh, yeah. Nice. Balls. we got the Army Navy Saturday tomorrow. How are you feeling about that under? Under 33 and a half. No, I, 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 I like the, I like a side. No, no, no total. I, they, My they guess is you like Navy. Every, game, every year, the total keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. My guess is you like Navy. I bet Navy. Did you take him at two and a half, or what did you think about? Uh, I bet Navy at a pick. We, yeah, that's right. Was it Army favored for a minute? Mm, yeah, it was like pick them. May, yeah. May, Army was favored maybe one early. Without, when we talk about bowl games, obviously we're going to have a lot of fun with this on this, sh this show going forward because bowl season is, uh, is, there's tons of value throughout bowl season. What are the a couple of the games you fired on right away? And I mean, I'm sure the lines have obviously moved, but this gives people an example. If they are with you at sportshandicapper.com, you're going to give them these plays way before the lines start moving. Yeah, I, I got some big bets, actually. Uh, for the, f actually, their first, ooh, first set of games. Let me, uh, you know what? Give me one uh, second. Let me just throw them up here. I'm going to throw the lines up from our good friends at inspin.com. And uh, I, I know you, uh, you were on assignment kick, last. Go ahead. The ball season kicks off the 17th, I believe. Oh, no, 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 no. 16th. No, it's the 16th. Yeah, I bet a couple games on the 17th. All right. What are we looking at? Let me guess. Hey, before you say anything, I'm thinking you did something on BYU SMU and maybe on Fresno, Washington State. Yes, I did bet uh, SMU plus one. 
I figured. And that line obviously now is SMU minus three. And I bet Fresno State at a pick. Yep, and Fresno's now minus three. So once again, this is why you need to sign up with Seal. We're not telling you you have to, but I, if I were you, I would. Because when Seal gives these plays out, I mean, that's three-point moves on both of those games. Actually, I'm sorry, a four-point move. On the SMU game, they were plus one. Now they're minus three. Fresno was, you know, pick them now minus three, and that's a key number on both sides. And you've been very successful throughout the year, Seal, with Fresno State picks and SMU picks. And actually, you've, you know a lot about BYU as well. So those are games that are right in your right, uh, right in your uh, range. Yes. What? What? Uh, anything else uh, early? In uh, there's there's some things I'm looking at. But I'm waiting for more information later, so I'm not going to throw anything else out there at this point. But there'll be more stuff. The tra- the transfer portals, uh, you know, going crazy. So, how about the new- coach? How about the game where you've got a coach that is? I'm forgetting what the game now is in Louisville, where he is the coach of the other school. They're playing each other. I know it's bizarre, isn't it? Uh, it's, I don't think it's ever happened before. Probably not. It's just it's college football, 2022. Yeah, I guess. But right? much like how I don't think a guy's come off the street and two days later led two touchdown drives in the final three minutes to. Beat a Raiders team. Yeah, yeah I've never seen happen. that before. Never seen that before. Nope. That was insane. Well, how about this, though, before we get to the NFL? One game I wanted to just get your feeling on, and you know I'm a big Eastern Michigan guy. You're the king of the Mac. Uh, Eastern Michigan is looking for that first bowl win since 87. They've gone to 500. Chris Creighton after being one of the worst programs in the country for about 10 to 15 years. Even Ron English, uh, the former Michigan Wolverine coordinator, couldn't get anything going on there at Eastern uh, Eastern getting three and a oh, half. Yeah, he, might have, he might have been one of the worst coaches in the history of Eastern Michigan. He was terrible. He definitely Ronnie. was no Rick Rasnick. He, he was no Rick Rasnick, that's for sure. But <laughs> when, when, you, uh, when you look at this, with Eastern getting the three to hook, San Jose State, I know they got a great defense. You've picked San Jose State throughout the year. I just feel like this is Eastern's time to get that bowl win up there in Idaho at the famous Potato Bowl. Uh, I, I like Eastern outright, but I mean, what about the three now? Uh, I have to look at the game more. Uh, San Jose State, ever since one of their kids got hit by a scooter, or hit, he got hit by a bus on a scooter. Oh, that's and right. Yeah, yeah. They haven't he was played on a scooter got hit by a bus. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, 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 right. If he got hit by a scooter, he wouldn't be dead. Uh, I, I, it's easier to get hit by a bus, I guess, than die. But I, uh, they haven't played well since he got smushed. So I, I don't know. Uh, they, they didn't finish the year off very well. They, they missed a game. They had a game against New Mexico State canceled, and they came back, and they were real choppy to end the year. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with that team. Talent wise, they're better than Eastern Michigan, but Eastern Michigan's they're they're a bunch of gamers. I'll tell you, they're in every, they're in every game. Every game. Green's one of the best cover guys in the country. Yep, every game. They're in every game. Well, we'll talk further about that game coming up next week. Let's talk about some NFL, and I'm going to start before we get to where you're feeling good about NFL week number uh, thirteen. I want to talk about this Lions game. And, you know, you've agreed with me a lot when I've told you I felt the Lions, I mean, obviously they could have won four in a row. They've won, this would be their um, fourth win in five games. And they started, you know, one and six, and all of a sudden they're, you know, a five-win team. It's one of these things where I don't like this game at all for Detroit. It opened Lions minus one. It's been as high as Lions minus two and a half. The Vikings are definitely not as good as their 10-2 and record. That being said, though, this is the, it's kind of like Eastern Michigan. They, they won't lose on the road as big underdogs, but they'll come home against Buffalo at a noon game and get their asses kicked. This is the kind of spot where the Lions have not been good. I know it's a new regime year two with Brad Holmes and, and Dan Campbell. And Dan Campbell was 200 to one, by the way, Seal. I, I gave out, a, I did a video last night or two nights ago, and Dan Campbell was 200 to one to win the coach of the year at FanDuel. And I said, jump on this now because if they win this game on Sunday, it's going to get cut in half or more. The, the odds have gone down to 30 to 1. I feel like I'm you. I, I've, I've moved because people, I got a lot of people text me or message me saying that they bet it or they couldn't get it in time. That went for, I don't think it was just because of me, but it went from 200 to 1 to 30 to 1 in less than 10 hours. But I, I just don't feel good about the Lions in this game. I wonder if you feel that Minnesota's the value. I had a big bet on the Lions last week. Big. Oh, big yeah, bet. that was easy. Uh, this week, actually, I got a big, big, big teaser bet with the Lions plus seven and a half. And, oh, uh, I love the Lions plus seven and a half, but I just feel uh, like the Lions are going to lose this game by two or three points. I'm very nervous about them being a favorite. Yeah, I, no, I like the Lions straight. I didn't bet them straight because I got plus seven and a half on like six and a half point teasers. I loaded up on Monday morning. This game was actually Minnesota one. 
Right, and then it immediately got completely just destroyed into the Lions minus one. Yeah, I, I, I hit my teaser right. before it got destroyed. That was smart. Seven and a half, key number. Uh, so if, if you're someone that is looking at just betting the game, you would just say stay away. I would bet the money line on the Lions, actually. Okay. I like the Lions. And I, like I said, if the Lions win this game and get their sixth win in a weak NFC – with obviously the Niners having issues and other teams having issues. It's Sunday Night Football showed the graphic. The Lions are sniffing around for the playoffs. They will have a chance. I mean, their, their number right now to make the playoffs is almost 6-1. to one. And as I mentioned, Dan Campbell was 200. I think Nick Sirianni, unless the Eagles completely fail the rest of the regular season, and they've got some tough games, he's going to win the coach of the year. Robert Sala's got a chance of the Jets making the playoffs. But the fact that the Campbell's line went from 200-1 to one seal down to 30-1 to one in less than 10 hours. Like I said, it's maybe I got some – Small powers like you do, because I put the video out, and all of a sudden, maybe they saw these people betting for Michigan, and the line completely got destroyed. So yeah, well, don't, don't worry, he's not he's not winning the coach of the year. I don't but, think he is either. But I, I can you think about that though. I don't yeah, think he's winning I, it either. But two hundred to one to thirty to one in ten hours. Yeah, that's well, kind of ridiculous. After they lose one more game, it's going back to 100. oh, I totally but, agree. Uh, let's talk about where you're looking at in uh, NFL week number thirteen. Uh, honestly, so far, the Lions is the only game I've uh, invested in. Really? Not well, in the rest me, of give the me some leads here. There's got, I know you I know you got a couple leads that you've been thinking about. Mm, I don't know. Maybe the Bengals in the first half, thinking about against Cleveland. They, they haven't matched up with Cleveland very well. I mean, they got Halloween night on TV. They got bitch left. Right. Uh, well, you, you, you well get Deshaun Watson, who's completely rusty, but they, they, they uh, won. Rusty, uh, please, they, they, they should douse him in the W2. <laughs> uh, so what, what, about this, what about the Jets and Bills? You got a, a solid 10 with the Jets team that's got a great defense. We know the Bills are probably the best team in the NFL. My pick to win the Super Bowl. That's a lot of points. It's the, it's the era of Mike White. He's been incredible. They probably should have won last week, and, and they – you know, in the end, since he got lucky, but it's one of these things where uh, I think it's a lot of points, even though the Bills are a great team. It is a lot of points. I've been on the Jets a lot this year. Uh, I would take the ten. Uh, the only part they did beat them this year, which is not the the best of the circumstances. If you're looking to back the Jets, sure. But the but Jets, I'm sorry. Are tough. Jets are tough. They're they're in every game too. They only yeah, had one big game this year. I meant to say, I'm sorry, the Jets almost beat uh, Minnesota last week. The Lions are playing. Yeah, the Jets are in every game seal. And that defense, defense, as we know, travels in the NFL. And if you can play defense, and, and now with Mike White in the offense being much better than Zach Wilson, if you can keep yourself within striking distance, you're going to be in a lot of games and have a chance to win a lot of games. And they're growing up, much like the Lions under Dan Campbell with Robert Sala, the former Dearborn Fortson uh, coach here in the Michigan area, first Arab American coach in the history of the NFL to be a head coach and to be a, a defensive coordinator as well. Uh, I think that's too many points. So I, I definitely like the ten. You you definitely think the ten is a solid number, right? Oh, absolutely. I would take uh, I would take ten. And then one other game that I wanted to talk to you about is this very very wacky game with the Dolphins and the Chargers. Uh, they flexed this obviously to Sunday Night Football. Dolphins obviously too a little banged up, but he should be able to play. Justin Herbert's been a total disappointment. Dolphins on the road. There's not a huge Charger fan base when they play at SoFi. It's not like, obviously, the Dolphins were playing in Miami. It's on the key number, minus three right now, minus 120. Do you think there's any value on going against the public and in this last-ditch effort with the Chargers trying to make a playoff push? They've got to win a game like this. Is there value on, on Los Angeles with the three, the key number? Uh, I got the numbers right to me. I, I, I wouldn't touch that game. Uh, I, I, I just wouldn't touch it. I mean, the Chargers – problem the Chargers have is they're not healthy. That's why the Lions are playing better. The Lions are one of the healthiest teams. They got they had a lot of injuries early, and most of them were back. That's that's the reason why the Lions are playing well. Right. That's the reason no, why the Chargers are struggling. They, they battle injuries. You tell me the team that's going to be healthy at the end of the year, that, that's a team will, you know. I mean, look at Frisco. They were they were starting to get everybody back, and then he lost uh, Garoppolo to a broken foot. It's all luck. It's all injuries. Yep, that's uh, in the NFL these days. Injuries pile up. Everyone's got them. you got to be able to find a way to, to avoid them and be healthier when it matters later in the year. Any other game that maybe you're just looking at, thinking about? Yeah, uh, let me see. I, I love the Texans plus 17 against the Cowboys. Kidding. <laughs> I, I, would, I would lay 30 on the Cowboys. Yeah, the Texans are just – I mean, they, they, first of all, they, they hired a coach that's about 90 years old. He looks like a, a black Moses. You ever see Lovey Smith lately? Yeah, he's in Black Santa. 
He's a black. I mean, I, where, where did they come up with him as a head coach on a team that's the youngest team in the league? Probably. They liked what he did in Illinois. What did he do in Illinois? I don't know. He made them relevant for like two seconds. And please, what a stupid hire. They hired a, a guy last year, Cauley, hey, for one year. Steel, this guy, guy went to a Super Bowl. Well, you went 1970? No, it was like 2011. Please, give me a break. Lovey Smith's a complete dinosaur. He's a ter- he was a terrible hire. The guy last year was a terrible hire. They're they're going to have three coaches in three years. The Texans, yeah, well, that, that they Texas team is manager. unwatchable. They're, they fired their general manager. The funny the funniest move this week out of all of, all the moves everywhere was the Tennessee Titans firing right. their general manager after winning years winning seasons every year. Well, they they fired him because they got embarrassed by the Eagles because they traded Brown away, their best receiver, to the Eagles. Right. The Eagles buried them, and that was it. Just bye bye, man, general manager. He was guy, they were the one seed last year. This the team almost went to the Super Bowl because it, it, it was a dumb trade. AJ Brown. Oh, it was. It was. A, I still when they did that when that broke. I remember I got an alert on my phone, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me? What are they thinking?" Like the Eagles instantly, if Jalen Hurts had a good year, which he has. Became a Super Bowl favorite, one of the top three teams in the NFL. Why would you? Would, those kind of top five receivers are. They want to give him over. They want to give him over twenty million a year. So the Eagles gave him twenty five million a year, and he yeah. signed. And and for and five the Eagles have a great chance to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, a- a- after the Eagles bitch slapped Tennessee, they had enough of that general manager. Yeah, it would be like if the Lions let Barry Sanders, you know, retire. Oh, they did. Uh, all right, Seal, great stuff by you. Please check out his site at sportsanacamera.com. Before we get out of here, parting shots. You wanted to say something about the World Cup. Uh, when's it over? It's over next week. Can't wait. All right. Great stuff by you. Thanks again to Jamie. We'll see you next week for the great nobleman. Seal, James, Sam, all of our great uh, uh, peeps here. The cast of thousands of the Sports Handicapper, uh, a sports show uh, powered by sportshandicapper.com. Happy early holidays. Enjoy the World Cup. Enjoy the Army-Navy game. Keep reaching for the stars. Believe in the dream. And until next time, we love you. Peace.